Uh, I am thrilled today uh, to be introducing our keynote speaker. During my tenure at Nate, I've never been more excited than I am today to be in the presence of our keynote speaker. Uh, many of you may not know this, my dad was a high school football and basketball coach for 43 years. During that time, I came to recognize the value of the impact a coach can have. A coach is a CEO, a disciplinarian, a mentor, a friend, and our keynote speaker today has coached at the highest of levels in American sport. Coach Sean Payton of the New Orleans Saints was the 2006 NFL Coach of the Year, his very first season with the organization. In 2009, he galvanized an entire city and region and country by leading the New Orleans Saints to the 2009 Super Bowl championship and their victory over the Indianapolis Colts. And I just found out backstage that Coach Payton is now tied for the all-time wins list with the Saints franchise. He did that the last game of the season, which means the first game next year, he's likely gonna be the all-time leading winning coach in Saints history. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm Nate Unite welcome to Coach Sean Payton. what, it's nice being home. Um, so let me get this straight. You guys build, fix, and work on the tallest structures in the world. Correct? And you're holding your convention 10 feet below sea level. I don't understand that. Maybe it's your way of getting grounded here this week. But I hope that, uh, I hope you found our city um, entertaining. I know usually the conventions here, I know that this is the case for us uh, sports teams. When you have family members and you end up in a city like New Orleans, they all come to games. Uh, it's a great city to visit. Uh, certainly, if there's one thing we do better than any city in the world, uh, we know how to feed you, take care of you, uh, put you in a hotel, everything's close, and uh, it's amazing to see just the progress that we've made, and it's hard to believe, you know, I'm going on my 10th year here since uh, post-Katrina recovery, but when I, when I was just kind of looking over this topic, and the group uh, that I was going to be working with and, and visiting with, it's unique, I'm kind of fired up about it today, so I'm going to operate this clicker. I'm going to do everything right here. There's a historical perspective much greater in your industry than in mine. A thousand years from now, no one's going to remember the bad game or the wrong call or, for that matter, even the Super Bowl win in 2009. Yet there's going to be signs of what many of you do um, left to marvel at or criticize. And we were just in the back, and, and all of a sudden, we were talking about terms 100% tie-off. And then I was looking at this pyramid thinking, they probably didn't have 100% tie-off, and that's why it was at an angle. <laughs> but I know uh, a number of the things that we're going to discuss, or I'm going to visit with you about today, there's going to be some parallels in teamwork and groups, company structures. Um, it's amazing the more and more you see successful teams, businesses, uh, organizations, there's some common things that hopefully I can hit on a few of them today. Skyscraper history. So I did this little research and I started looking at these buildings because I'm 52 years old and 
I think last week I still thought the Sears Tower was the largest building in the world. So I start looking at these, and these are just a handful, and they're, and they're, they're organized by height. And it reminds me a little bit of the roller coaster race that's out there. As soon as someone's building a roller coaster, on the other side of the world, someone's already building another one to exceed it. And obviously the challenges that you guys are faced with in servicing a few of these different type buildings, uh, all the way from just the, the simple cleaning antennas, I can't even imagine some of it. So, but I am an idea guy. And if you haven't noticed in New Orleans, the streets are narrower here. It's not easy to drive a big car around. Some of the streets are bumpy. And you would say space is at a premium. The French Quarter, which was settled first, is, is very restrictive. And my concern is the future of our game in the NFL in a city like this, where parking and space is at a premium. No one's ever come up with this, and I thought this is my time maybe to give it to a group to see what you guys think, but. <laughs> now, I wouldn't want to clean it. I don't know how we get to that antenna on the top, but it solves some problems. I think you better stick to coaching. Here's what I know. I've spoken maybe two or three times a year. I don't have a chance to do this often. And I've done it in a lot of different places, other jobs I've been around the country. And I remember the first time I had a chance to visit with a group here. And I'm telling you now, it is hard giving a speech in New Orleans Hard in that you do not want to draw the four o'clock docket. So I'm thankful that I'm talking to you at 12.30 lunchtime, and I feel bad for the person at 4.30 talking about antenna strength. Because there's so much to do in this city, people are getting ready to hit the quarter. I know you guys are finishing up your visit, but back to what I was talking about before, having lived here 10 years, I haven't hit a third of the restaurants that I want to get to. And so I appreciate your time. Uh, it's, like I said, it's challenging when, when there's so much to do and all of a sudden people start looking at their, their itinerary and somehow or another they're going to get out and, and get to those activities. The main, the main, jits, the main gist of what I think is important and, and I hit on earlier, is the subject of team building. And I really think we're in the people business, all of us, to some degree. You know, I think uh, having done this a while now, if you ask me what do you, what's important to you, I would say passion. Um, if I'm hiring a coach or getting ready, we go to the combine here this evening and we'll spend a week in Indianapolis on looking at this year's group of college rookies. We have a short period of time where we're trying to evaluate things that we think will help predict to this player's su success, or possibly things that we feel will hinder what kind of success this player will have. And I thought it was interesting, I'm going to read something that I saw all oh, this past week. Um, Greg Popovich is a fantastic coach who works for the San Antonio Spurs. He's won multiple championships. Um, we're always given this question, you know, what, what, what are you looking for specifically? And, and these are the same questions you're faced with in regards to your organization, um, your team. Uh, regardless of what it is that you're in charge of, what makes one functional or more successful than the other? And I'm just going to read what he said, and, and I think there's, uh, well, I know there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of truth to this. He says, for us, it's easy. We're looking for character. But what the hell does that mean? 
In other words, you hear that a lot. Uh, I know I certainly use that a lot. We're looking for people who have gotten over themselves. And you can tell that pretty quickly. You can talk to someone for about five minutes and you can tell if it's about them or if they understand that they're just a piece of the puzzle. So we look for that. We look for a sense of humor. A sense of humor is a huge thing with us. You have to feel comfortable in your own skin. Someone that doesn't have all the answers and recognizes that. We need people who can handle information and not take it personally. So subtly he's saying that we need people that can accept constructive criticism and, and truly look to, to improve themselves. That's not easy to find now. That's not easy to find. And many of you, most of you, uh, are in organizations and you recognize a good teammate or a good worker or someone who uh, gets along with others and goes above and beyond, and yet there's this, um, oh, they can make fun of themselves. You know, it's not personal and, and they can laugh at themselves. And I think uh, hearing this quote last week, there was so much of that, that that rings true. This is a little bit of what we're doing this next week in Indianapolis when we interview these players. You know, what's the makeup like? 2000, 2005 Katrina hit in August. I was coaching at the Dallas Cowboys um, as, a, as an assistant coach. And all of us, you know, it's one of those events, all of us can kind of remember exactly where we were and when we saw, you know, if, if, you're, if you're uncertain of the chain of events, Katrina came and the city kind of weathered the storm, if you will, that first day. And then the following day, the levees began to breach and, and the city flooded. And so the initial storm and the surge um, the first day Katrina passed, um, they handled pretty well, and it wasn't until the following day that, that we saw, and every one of us saw it on the news. So I was just finishing up my third year with the Cowboys. Katrina hit in August, so that was the preseason in our industry. Uh, and when that, when that 2005 season ended, I knew that that was gonna be a year where I was gonna have a chance to move on to become a head coach. I'd been contacted by a handful of teams and you never know when it's time, but I felt like that was gonna be the time. And I'm from, originally from Chicago, Illinois and a Midwesterner and the Green Bay Packers were one of those teams that had expressed an interest and, and surely with the tradition there, um, I was drawn to that. And that was the first interview that was lined up and, and I was gonna go take. New Orleans was the second, and then Buffalo was the third, and I wasn't really excited about going to Buffalo with the snow and the cold weather, but. So the Green Bay interview took place. I felt like it went really well, and now came the New Orleans interview. And, and there was, there was a lot of question regarding the city and regarding the, the infrastructure, much more significant than the football team. The team in that season played down in San Antonio, so that was the least of their problems. And I remember getting here for that interview and, and meeting Mickey Loomis and walking through the airport and. and Man, it was like crickets. There were, there were, there were hardly anybody uh, at least visible. There was a, you know, kind of a damp smell to, to the airport itself. Um, most, almost all the hotels were closed. There were a few open for business. And it appeared very, short, very shortly into this trip that this was gonna be Mickey's problem, not mine. And, my only focus was my cell phone and was I getting a, a text or a phone call from the area code in Green Bay. And every one of us has, has been through some type of day or interview or hour, if you will, where you're not really focused on 
this challenge, it's, it's too big and it's for someone else. And, and that was really my attitude at the time. And I'll never forget that evening at the hotel going back to the room before we were going to have dinner. And I had about two hours. And right when I got to the room, I got a message and I didn't get the job. I'll never forget it. And I threw the phone into the pillow. And the whole time I kept thinking, I'm not going to Buffalo. <laughs> But we're brought sometimes to places uh, for certain reasons, and, and our challenge was uniquely different than many others. It wasn't just about trying to figure out a way to win football games. It was, it was bigger than that. And it was, uh, I would say it was on display, and it was from a building standpoint reflected by the Superdome. And many of you have had a chance to see it this week or, or have seen it before. There was a lot of symbolism there. The, there were holes in the roof as, as they're illustrated here. It was used as a, a shelter, if you will. And the damage w was significant. And I would say it was somewhat similar to the, the state of the city. And, and I'm not just talking about the saints, but I'm talking more about the people. And, and so this was going to be an important test for, for this region, for everyone. And, and fortunately, um, the decision was made to, to keep football here. And they got into, basically, they spent $185 million to, to rebuild this structure. Within the next eight years after that, the total would reach $336 million, and that was so they could host another Super Bowl in 2012. So in the past 10 years, if you will, $336 million have gone into, those funds have gone into this building. And I would say there was that, that same uh, shot in the arm for the people just as the stadium got fixed. Now, a year from now, we'll be the only NFL team that plays truly in a dome. There are other indoor venues, and, and I recognize that North Dakota State and the Bison play, uh, play in the dome. They've got a real good quarterback this year. But there's, there's a meaning to that building of significance, and that was our challenge, and back to teamwork, and back to finding the right people, and this was my first head coaching opportunity. I'll never forget, uh, my boss at the time, Bill Parcells in Dallas, said, you got to figure out very quickly what's kept that organization from having success, or three years from now, there'll be someone else in another navy blue suit, you know, giving another speech, and, and, and I think drawing on what Popovich was quoted uh, as saying, I think our focus really started with the people. And it really started with a roll your sleeves up approach, uh, a little bit of humility. Um, it, was, it was a time when Kat Katrina was an easy, and I don't want to say this in the wrong term, but it was, it was very easy to, to blame why something couldn't be accomplished on Katrina. And so many of the reasons were obviously uh, significantly true, and yet we just weren't, that was not going to be the reason that we were not going to have success. And, and so the focal point for us as an organization was really creating that team environment and, and, and really finding the right people that could help us with that vision. This is our all hands on deck. You know, we're, we're no different than you. There's times where we're asked to do th different things. And there's an old saying in our league, the more you can do. You'll be employed a lot longer if you can do a number of tasks and, and you approach them with the same sense of urgency and the same uh, attitude, if you will. That wears well on any organization or any building. And so we, we apply that to our players oftentimes because 
they play offense and defense, and yet we have to play special teams. And so some players, you know, might look at that as, well, you know, I'm, I'm a starting wide receiver or I'm a starting defensive back. Why should I play special teams? And so very easily it was important that we plug their faces in. And, 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 and they recognize that, look, it's another snap in a game. And so that might mean you do something for a day or two that you haven't had to do, maybe a week, maybe half a year, that your expertise allows. And, and once again, there's that selflessness that we're talking about for the good of the company, for the good of the organization. And when you have that, you're heading in the right direction. In 2012, all right, so in 2012, this, this same subject comes up with me. I've been a head coach at that point for, shoot, seven years, and I'm out one season. And I go back and I'm gonna help out my son's sixth grade football team. In fact, I'm gonna be the offensive coordinator, all right? I'm going to be the offensive coordinator, and here's the, the comparison. It would be like many of you helping your children out with Lego City for a science trip project. You're, you're, you're doing something you're more than qualified to do, and, and yet here we are cutting oranges on Tuesday, pouring Gatorade on Saturday, and doing some of the very basic stuff that at some point earlier in our careers we've done, and, and yet it was, it was just, as, uh, just as challenging and enjoyable and rewarding uh, as ever before. Our league now, our league now has enjoyed more success and popularity than ever. And yet when I was making these comparisons to, to what many of you are involved with, I think all the time of a movie that starts with a skyline, or a TV show that starts, and everyone goes as a first impression, and it helps you realize that, hey, we must be in New York, or we must be in Miami, or we must be, and I think it's kind of a cool industry you guys are in. This is the first time for me where I'm talking to a group and I'm thinking, this is a pretty sexy job. I mean, the jobs you guys have is pretty cool. My first time, my family moved, it was 1979. I can remember it like it was yesterday. My dad was taking a job with CNA. That's the red building on the right. But seeing that skyline for the first time in Chicago and moving to that city, it was, um, it was significant because every summer we'd go, we worked on the 31st floor, I think. It would have been the northeast corner. And we could see the air show. And we would go there from that vantage point and watch, uh, watch with a great view. But I was amazed at the size of these buildings. And I did a little research on, you know the name, the name changed on the Sears Tower? Huh? So it's kind of like stadiums. You know, if there's a new sponsor, all of a sudden, I'm still calling it the Sears Tower, but there's the Sears Willis Tower. There's some fun-filled facts in there uh, that but you get down to the bottom and you start looking at the television shows and all the things that are significant about a skyline and about the fields that you guys work in, and it's amazing. So my career then takes me from Chicago as a young coach to San Diego, college coach there at San Diego State as a graduate assistant in Indiana State, back to San Diego State, Miami of Ohio, and then eventually into the NFL. And in 1999, I got hired by the New York Giants and worked there for four years. And we played Monday night football against the Denver Broncos. We played Monday night football against the Denver Broncos and it was the opening of their new stadium. And that would have been September 10th on a Monday. The following day was 9-11 and our offices were at the Meadowlands, which is where the stadium was. So about, I would say, two miles as a crow flies. 
But we had flown back after that game Monday night and landed. It was straight through the, the night, losing time. We landed in Newark, I was going to say 7.30 a.m. And that's what happens when you play a West Coast Monday night game. So we got back at 7.30 a.m. And the plane next to us is the one that's going to go down in Pittsburgh, which was a United flight leaving Newark. And that very next day, obviously, um, all of our worlds changed. And another, I've got some friends that said, man, your, your life's been like Forrest Gump, you know, between Katrina and, and then being in New York during that time frame. I wasn't there to see the, the new building, but I know the significance of what it meant to everybody in, in, in having, that, uh, having that built. But we practiced two miles away, and I would say for the better part of a month, we saw you know, the smoke and the damage that was done at that time to, uh, to a re real unique structure. In 2009, we won our first Super Bowl. Now, we've been to the playoffs six times here in the last 10 or 11 years, maybe five times. And yet, that was a culmination of a lot of hard work, a lot of teamwork, a lot of the things that we've been talking about earlier. And here's the one thing I would say, and, and I kind of put a few pictures together. The one thing I would say, when the game ended, we were down in Miami, I'll never forget, we got on the buses afterwards, and there was this feeling of postpartum, there was this feeling like, man, there's no more games to play, and after you achieved something or had success, kind of followed that path, but had success, and all of a sudden, it ends, there's an empty feeling. And I'll never forget getting on the bus, and this was after, this was after the Super Bowl, that evening heading to the hotels, and we have the trophy, and it's that Shawshank Redemption moment where they're sitting on the building, and it's just quiet, and you want it to last forever. But we're caught kind of all in the same industry. We're, we have a job to do, and then once we do that one, we get on to the next task. And so it's much like you're, you're chasing this chicken, if you will if you've ever watched a Rocky movie, and then you catch it, and the only thing you, get, you have to do next is you throw it down, and you start chasing it again. But I say this to our players all the time, and I, and I say it to our coaching staff, what you remember most is not the actual event itself. You remember the journey in the process of getting there. That's what you miss. When you're no longer doing what you do right now, that's what you miss. It's the challenges on a Tuesday when you've got to do something, the weather's not cooperating, and, and you miss the relationships. You don't miss the end game. You don't miss the, the actual cutting of a ribbon or completion of a project. What you miss most in, in, in any successful line of work, you miss the relationships you have with the people you work with. And so that's why the teamwork, and that's why the right individuals, and that's why the selflessness, and that's why the sense of humor, and that's why some of those things become that much more important, because then you start looking forward to your job, and pretty soon, you've got the best job. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me today. It was an honor to come speak in front of you, and uh, enjoy the rest of your time in our city. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Payton, uh, for joining us. Great uh, message today that uh, will fire all of us up even more. So on, uh, on behalf of uh, Nate, our members, and our board of directors and staff, we'd like to present you with a speaker award. It's not as big as the Lombardi Trophy, but it's going to have to do. It's perfect. <laughs> and then. Uh, if you want to see some cool views, 
uh, in addition to what you put on the screen, we, we have a uh, aerial photography book that we'd like to present to you. This is a book of communication structures, photos provided by our members in all climates, all geographic locales, and uh, it's a good momento for you. So thank you so much for being here. Outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, didn't, I didn't say this at the beginning. I felt like it would be, I really struggle with heights. <laughs> and the first time I realized that was when I went on one of these parasails. And I don't know where, but somewhere in Hawaii, there's my grips on both handles of that parasail. And I had the parachute and everything. And so I don't know how you do it, many of you, but um, I appreciate what you do. We do. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank you. What a great message. Uh, to close us down today, I'm going to call up Nate Board of Directors Chairman, Mr. Jim Tracy. Jim? One thing I noticed about Coach, he came out here, by the way, thank you, Coach. Thank you from New Orleans and thank you from the NFC North for not going to Green Bay. Um, but what I noticed about this guy is he didn't walk up here wearing a big old Hurricane Super Bowl ring because I think he's still looking for his next one, huh? Give him a hand. And that's a little bit, uh, and that's a little bit of the approach that we want to take today because I want to thank the Nate staff. Let me tell you, your Nate staff has record attendance, a record number of sponsors, and a record number of exhibitors for the second year in a row. So Nate staff, you just won your second Super Bowl. Next year we're headed to Dallas. We're going to do it again, huh? Give it up. Come on. Join me. Thank you, Nate staff. Wow. You guys are awesome. Coach referred to teamwork. He talked a lot about teamwork. He talked about the characteristics of a team and the characteristics of the individuals that make up what he wants to join him to be a winner. Well, let me tell you, in this organization, strength is created by numbers. Numbers create more influence, and influence creates more strength. So when you leave New Orleans, it's up to you to have our member go get a member. Because we need you, and we need the people that you know from your market to create influence so we can do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. So go get a member, number one. Number two, Coach talked about loyalty. Loyalty, big deal, big deal. I was talking to Ben Little, he's on your board of directors, and Ben told me a little bit, taught me a little bit about loyalty today. He said, Jim, in our subcontractor agreement, it says if you work anywhere near us on one of the structures that we're working on, or if you come anywhere around Centerline Solutions, it's in your agreement that you're a Nate member. That message was strong and it resonated with me. And the message that I carry from your board that you elected to you is that there's a whole bunch of folks around here who tell sell, sell tower stuff. You go buy from a member. Tomorrow, go buy from a member, huh? Say thank you to them. They're the ones, they're the ones who actually put up the money so we can have a successful show. Thank your sponsors, thank your members, huh? So go buy from a member, and lastly, I'd like you to help build a team, and building a team always starts with action. So the first action you take is at two o'clock, go downstairs to the trade show and go shopping. And we'll see you next year in Dallas. Thank you very much for coming to Nate. We love you guys. Mm -hmm.